Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good to see you all again on another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John Coma and I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Liz Lister, MD. And um, what should we talk about today, John? Well, Dr. Liz, the question I have for you is depression. Oh, that's People depressing. say that I'm not depressed, honest. I'm really feeling pretty good about this question. Oh, okay. Uh, but people often uh, characterize women as having depression. Mm. I, I guess maybe the postpartum depression, but depression in general uh, can be a very serious thing. A and yet it seems to me that um, men get depressed or get clinical depression just as easily. What, what's the What's the truth here? That's such a fantastic question because that's exactly what we're taught in medical school, that depression is at least twice as common in women as it is in men. There was a recent Mayo Clinic article that went into all kinds of detail about why is, depre why is depression more common in women than it is in men. And it talked about societal, hormonal, socioeconomic, all the different types of influences that could explain women having depression twice as often as men. However, there's even more recent information. This is a, there's something called a male depression risk scale, the MDRS. The MDRS was developed in the past decade and is now being studied more and more. And a study came out not very long ago at all, another study showing that that going wisdom that depression is more common in women, it's probably not true. And that what it comes down to is how you ask the questions on the depression rating questionnaire. That's interesting. Well, of course, that's always the case, isn't it? No matter what kind of questionnaire right. you have. If, if you don't right. ask the right question, they don't get the answer you need. Exactly, exactly. So for, for, uh, what, a good way to summarize uh, what the differences are, and again, these are very much generalizations and there's a lot of influencing factors. However, generally speaking, women tend to internalize their feelings. And perhaps, again, generalizing, men may exhibit more external behaviors. So for example, alcohol use is known to be higher among men and alcohol use, alcohol use most likely correlates with depression for men. So that's what we call an externalizing behavior versus an internalizing, feeling bad about myself. Yeah. A man may not resonate with that question, but he may say, yes, I'm driving more recklessly. I feel more angry at my family, more behaviors and thoughts and feelings that go outward rather than inward. And when you ask the questions that way, the studies are finding depression and sometimes anxiety more common in men than in women when you ask the questions in ways that resonate more with men. Hmm. Very interesting, very interesting. You know, I, I have the, I'm one of those people that subscribe to the idea, and I think it's generally pretty true, that women um, uh, know themselves better. They know their bodies, they know their feelings, uh, whether they keep it inside, as you say, internalize it, or whether they you know, spill it out, they understand themselves better, I think. And men may or may not keep it inside, but we don't understand each ourselves. Or we, we're, so we're, those we're, less likely, we're less likely to uh, uh, admit to ourselves that uh, we're feeling off because we're a guy, so we have to be, we have to tough it out. Right, right. Lots of reasons Absolutely. why, why sure. men need to be probed more to find out mm -hmm. if it's depression or not. Correct. And in the right way, right? To your point, men, it, it, there's a cultural influence, no question about it. People talk about toxic masculinity. They talk about the pressure on men not to talk about their feelings. Uh, it's a challenge. It's a really, really big challenge, but it's an important challenge. And of course, there's this intersects with other issues, right? These kinds of cultural differences, racial differences, 
uh, sexuality and gender expression differences are going to impact all of this, right? Hormonal differences on mood, all of these are important. What was eye-opening to me, and I think is important for people to be aware of, is that a lot of the standard tools that we've used up to now to assess depression and anxiety might be revealing it more often in women because of how the questions are asked. So we need to update all of those tools and materials so that we're asking people the right questions so we can deliver the best care. Uh, that, that's, that's fascinating. And I have one last question for you, and that is, I could be wrong, but isn't depression hard to diagnose anyway? Well, nowadays there are standardized questionnaires. Okay, there's a generalized anxiety disorder questionnaire. There are these validated tools that are used by most uh, by most doctors, really. Uh, I had a new, uh, I was looking at an electronic medical record software that had all these tools integrated. You just clicked a button and you sent someone a depression questionnaire or an anxiety questionnaire. However, these are the tools that have been around for a while, and we need to make sure that we're using the male depression risk scale when we're sending it to men rather than the one that has been used the most over the last couple of decades that shows depression as definitely being more common in women turns out that they are questions that resonate with women more than they do with men sure sure of course you need a physician who uh is aware enough and confident enough to uh know when to ask uh, the question or, or yeah. to at least, uh, quite frankly, uh, even if you look like you're, uh, everything is fine, uh, perhaps uh, uh, even a GP should uh, from time to time say, by the way, I'd like you to take this uh, uh, test just so we have it out yeah. of the way and uh, maybe uncover something that doesn't otherwise show. Yes, it's being incorporated more routinely into practices, especially with the electronic records. Mm. It makes it easy to send people the questionnaires and and we're going to see more of that. We're going to see more technology coming where people take these questionnaires and they can even, like you said, take them on a periodic basis. And then the electronic record system can track what the results are doing and how it's changing over time and make sure people are feeling better and responding to whatever treatments that they're being given. Yeah, a good mm -hmm. mental health checkup. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you again for a very uh, interesting conversation that uh, most of us don't have. And so if this uh, sparks one or two people in our audience to uh, uh, take a look at depression, uh, either in themselves or in their spouse or somebody they care about, uh, that's a, a wonderful benefit that uh, we can all derive from conversations like this. Thank you and have a wonderful week. You as well. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.